Hi, I'm Wendy Murdoch, and this is Webinars with Wendy. I've been doing a series of webinars during the pandemic, largely to entertain myself, visit with my <laughs> friends, and of course, learn something. I think that's one of the most exciting things about the webinars is that I'm able to share with you a lot of the people that I know and their wealth of information. And it's truly forming a library of education that is available to you at the Surefoot Equine YouTube channel. If you wanna get the email so that you get the links to, to join the webinars, just make sure you join my mailing list at either surefootequine.com or murdochmethod.com. Um, we send out the emails on the weekends, typically on Sunday, and it has the links and you can sign up for the webinars. Today, my guest is Robin Hood. She's one of my favorite people. Um, I've known Robin since 1986, so that's a long time. <laughs> I'm not going to count. And we've been doing a series of webinars talking about combining T-Touch with Surefoot, but we've also been following the really interesting story of Bob, the off-the-track thoroughbred that Robin and I set up an experiment to work with in July of 2019. So I packed up all my stuff and went to Robin's Icelandic horse farm in Vernon, BC, and um, we had Violet Medhi, she did the photography, and Mandy Pretty, she was there to assist, and, and also the working students. We had a whole group of people, it was fabulous. And um, Robin invited her neighbor who owned Bob, and I'll let her tell you about that a little bit. Um, and we did this experiment of working with Bob over three days with just the Surefoot pads. We were looking to see what kind of a change we could make in that short period of time. But the really cool thing is that Robin's horse, this horse is Robin's neighbor, and so she's been able to follow up and then continue on. So I think this is gonna be a really fascinating webinar because Robin has a bunch of video that she can share with us. So welcome, Robin, thanks for coming back. <laughs> thanks, my pleasure. It's always fun to have a chat, Wendy. Uh, so I'm just gonna tell you about Bob is, I think eight, nine maybe now, and he was uh, on the track until he was, Seven, I think. And then, so he was raised a long time and maintained, it was sound, which is pretty incredible. Mm -hmm. And when Cassandra, he has a wonderful owner who really cares about his welfare and is just working slowly to kind of bring him along. And when she went to pick him up, he probably had only ever been loaded onto horse bands and he had always loaded well and he flipped over and he uh, broke his withers. And so that was what she was starting with in, I think, November of 2018. So she got him home and she worked through the trailer loadings fine, no problem at all. And, but he, as many racehorses, he's out of balance. So he falls forward, but he doesn't go forward. And he was really braced. He was braced at the base of his neck. And oh, he was quite difficult because he was insecure and all sorts of things. So she she comes and rides up at, um, in our arena, basically, well, whenever she rides, which is frequently. And it was great. Now, do you have Bob's, the the some of his, his little file from before? Yeah, so yesterday, yeah, yesterday she came over and she'd been playing a little bit with the neck ring. And I wanted to get some video of her with a body wrap, with the horse, with a promise wrap, with a... Uh, with the balance rein and with the neck rein. And so I put together, it's a, it's a fairly long video. I mean, it's like 15 minutes of different pieces because I wanted to show it was his mate, the way he could maintain the posture because you'll see in some of the pictures that he really had that, he was really seeking to kind of along, you know, lengthen the neck and, and come up through the withers and so on, but he couldn't hold it because of his balance. Right, so I'm gonna just screen share here and I have a whole Bob file. Um, but just to give you some idea, this is already, I think, day two because he's already standing more square, but you can see mm. the thick under neck muscle, how the sternum pushes forward, the hollow right here, and of course, broken withers. Um, and I'll just kind of... Okay. And it's so interesting seeing these pictures, the photographs, because his top line is completely different now, which is very cool. Right. And this is actually really typical. You can see that he was really mouthy. He had yeah. a worried eye, you know, the strain in the muscles, the lack of square stance. And that was, this was just trying to get a picture of Bob standing still. Hmm. Um, and you can see that we, this was day one because of her striped shirt. Yeah. <laughs> we struggled to get a picture of him standing still and obviously not square. Um, and so I just went around, oops, that's another horse. 
guys. Um, but we just started, like we start with all the horses, typically, like you can see the half physio pad on the ground right here. So I started with the half physio pad and then moved to the hard pad and um, most likely did, uh, started with the front foot because I remember that he was quite difficult with his back feet. In fact, he kicked me a little with his right hind. He was uncomfortable. And so he just kind of, it wasn't a hard kick, but it was a, like, hey, this is difficult for me kind of a thing, and um, which was really obvious. And you can see how, you know, he, he's really having a hard time standing in any kind of a balanced stance. Here we've progressed to two hard pads under the front feet, but you can see how he's really dropped down on his heel on this foot. Um, so, and here you can see how wide he's standing in front with narrow behind. So, and this was very typical, yeah, um, was. right? Remember? Yeah, totally. And especially totally. in movement when he would go past the exit, which is behind me, um, he would twist his neck at all the gates and just try to drag her out of the arena. Mm -hmm. um, so, and you can just see how poorly muscled he is in front here and how much he's on his forehand leaning on his chest and he hasn't put his foot forward to catch himself yet. <laughs> <laughs> um, but of course, traveling like that in motion, he would have to really stick his head up in the air. Boy, even Robin, looking back at these pictures, which, um, you know, we've done a couple of, of webinars on Bob. Um, it, it's really showing, and this is by day three, he had progressed a pod. So here's some of the before and afters uh, over these three days, right? So here is how he was walking before, really hollow, head up, thick under neck, on the forehand. And then we would have these really lovely moments of neck down, and you can see softness in the joints, more bend. Um, that's the same picture, just a little bigger. Um, this is another day, just looking to see how he's standing. Uh, he's standing, actually, is what that's all about. Mm -hmm. um, that was day two because of her shirt, but he's actually standing still so I can take his pictures. So we saw this immediate change with this horse in just one day and over three days. Again, you can even see how the neck is changing on the second day um, and even more so there. And I'm just going to flick through these here because I haven't even looked at them. And I think for Robin, it's probably really yeah to see because you saw him yesterday. But this was really typical in the trot, the really high head, thick under neck on the forehand. Um, the rider would have to brace herself against him a bit and and use the reins a lot because he was falling essentially. And in the, in the day two picture, it was in the evening, so that's why it's darker. But we can already see a change in outline. Um, and again, this kind of twisting and head up going past the door. And here, look at the difference in the rain. That's actually what tells you a big story right there is here she's having to keep a contact and trying to steady him. And here, even though his neck's still up, he's got enough balance that she can put a loop in the rain. A um, little dark, but you can see that same head up posture, second day, neck down. But, you know, a lot of people said to us, well, these are just moments in time and you've just picked moments in time. But really what we're trying to show here with these before and afters is that there are these moments, right? And it's, as Robin said, he's not able to maintain it at this point for a long period of time. Just think about if you're starting something new, doing something different, and someone asks you, okay, now you're going to have to do it for an hour. You mm -hmm. can't. Your nervous system is going to get exhausted, and you're going to lose it. You're going to go back to the old place because the nervous system doesn't have the resilience or knowledge or, you know, um, channel, if you will, brain cells, dendrites, to be able to maintain for a long period of time. But again, you can just see here how in two days, there's a significant difference. And this is day three, he's on soft pads. Um, look at, he's much more square. She can you know, stand there with a loop, look at the soft face and the relaxers. And Robin, do you remember what she said um, coming over to your place? The, the difference in him tacking up and coming over, and I can't remember exactly how she put it, but that was some of the significant changes in these three days. Yeah, I think one of the things is he has like a friend, he lives with one other horse and they would have, it was always, and you can see he's actually looking in the direction of where he lives. And that was why kind of going through the gate all the time was he was just, you know, calling for her and, and he, and he just got like easier and easier to come up. And, and the other thing is our farrier, we have a mutual farrier and he noticed how different he was with his feet after 
Oh, you wow. know, after it. So it's, um, you know, that was, that was pretty significant as well. And I think she even talked about how he would stand quietly to be tacked up at the mm-hmm. tie rail and that instead of being anxious walking over, he was actually yeah. picking grass. Yeah. So yeah. in three days, we did progress to pods with this horse. <laughs> That's a great picture. Yeah, I do. Um, and so um, you can see that he, he actually progressed quite quickly um, and would stand quietly. And um, that was just a little video of yeah. what she felt. But, you know, this was the differences. And the other significant thing, Robin, was that he couldn't pick up his right lead when we started on the before of the first day, this is all been on the first day. It would took it was the third try because I, I I had that a little bit on video, but he, he really struggled to find the right like to take there, and he had to sort of counterbend and do you know all sorts of things. And and the second day, he just immediately picked it up. And actually, interestingly, now he's easier on his right side than his left side. Oh wow! And for for almost everything, so and you'll you'll see it a little bit in the um, in the video that that I made from him yesterday, and so it was interesting. But you know, Cassandra is such a nice person to work with because she is just open to helping this horse. And what I've found is the you know little bits of help you can make any suggestion. There's there's kind of no sense of yes but you know at all. It's just she just does her best to you know, do, she, she's willing to explore everything. And I think that, you know, those, the Feldenkrais, one of his great sayings was making the impossible possible. Mm-hmm. And I think that's for me, when I see moments in time, I say to people, what we see is possibility. And if you have no possibility, what, what do you do? So from possibility comes ease, from ease comes elegance. And, and I, I think that if we keep thinking of those progressions of things rather than thinking of what they can't do, you know, it's kind of like here is, it's like, you know, with a dog, if a dog is pulling on a leash and you can get a step in balance so that they're not pulling and then 10 steps and then 20 steps, you have to get those first steps in order to be able to show that it's even possible to do. Isn't that a Chinese proverb that all journeys begin with the first step or something? Uh, that's a good one. <laughs> yeah. There's a Chinese proverb about that. Right. Um, and then you were telling me, just so that we catch some people up who don't know Bob's story, um, that, you know, we worked with the pad over those three days, but mm. Sandra did not do a lot with them afterward. And yet she continued to see improvement. Isn't that right? That's right. Yeah, she said that the, the, the pads are really kind of the turning point in, she takes, um, she takes lessons from a really nice woman who's really sensible and, you know, not trying to cram and jam the horse, but they tried lots of different things to help him sort of like the sort of different bits and so on and so forth. So she didn't use the surefoots all winter. We had a terrible winter. And then she started using them again in the spring. So she uses them just when she's tacking up. She, and, cause he really seems to enjoy standing on them. And he came up here to, we did some video with him of some body work and standing on the pads. It was kind of like an old friend, you know, he, he kind of goes back to those, um, the pads like, Oh yes, you know, here I am. It's this kind of Zen place. So, so it was, it was definitely a, a big shifting point for her. And then in the, the spring, we suggested that because, oh, because, and you'll see this a little bit in the very first part of the video, what he started doing this is what it looked like he was starting to head shake. Oh. And and it was the bugs were super bad. and and But if anything kind of would hit him in the nose or whatever, he would like take his head up to the side. And, and, and so... Um, he, again, he'd have more moments of coming down, but that was something that was sort of new with him. So I suggested that she use the the neck ring and ride him in the Liberty neck ring and see if, because I've seen in the past horses with this kind of syndrome actually really benefit from getting, getting the bridle off them. Well, and, that makes sense too, because, you know, the, some of the stuff that Hillary was talking about is the trigeminal nerve and how the bridal parts could be pushing, putting pressure on some of the nerves and blood vessels in the face. And the vagus nerve runs really close to the trigeminal. We're going to have a whole webinar on that with Catherine Wyckoff looking at vagus and trigeminal and all the nerves. Oh, cool. Very cool. Well, you know, the thing is, Cassandra has this, you know, one of the ergonomically correct bridles with the padded and the taking away around the ears. And so, you know, she really does her best to have this horse be, uh, be really comfortable. Um, the, uh, 
Oh, changing his name from Bob. I love the name Bob. That's what <laughs> someone said. I'm sure he has. I'm sure he has a racing name, but every everyone loves Bob. And if you met Bob, you'd know he was a Bob. <laughs> he's just he's a, such a he's a great. He's just got this great character and kind of spirit. So and we anyway, all smile when we say his name. I mean, we I do. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, but it, one of the things you brought up, Robin, that I think is so important for people to hear is that a he continued to improve after his experience with the pads over three days. So we did a short session and then that kind of kicked the cycle. But that also, you, when you come back again, because people always ask, well, how often should I do this with my horse? And yeah. I always say it depends. In his case, you know, he, he had the pads for a little while and then he had a break, he continued to improve. But then you come back and you show him again. And like you said, it's like an old friend. It's like, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, those are really comfy. So we can re-instigate that parasympathetic rest and digest, the whole relaxation response. And I've seen horses that haven't seen pads for six months to a year, and I come out with the pad, and they're like, oh, yeah, that's going to feel good. You know, so they absolutely remember the comfort. They do. And I use it actually sometimes when our farrier's here, if we have young horses or, well, Shiner was a good example. He was very difficult to pick up his feet. He's, he's maintained, once they were up, it was okay. He just had heavy feet. And, um, and so uh, Scott was here last week. And so I just stood him on the pads while he was trimming another horse. And, and then it's just that much easier for him and for Scott to be able to, to, be able to do his feet. Um, so, oh, that is a good question about the Hackamore it, yeah, it and I'm just it, typing to go watch the webinar on bits and bridles with Dr. Clayton because we talked a lot about that. And one of the one of the most interesting pieces of data that she came out with in that webinar was that the bitless bridles with the crossover have a higher nose pressure than a cavasson or a flash. Yeah, and I think it's also pole pressure too. I mean, not just both pole. We're going to take a video clip from that and put it up on Facebook because I felt it was such an important. Um, piece of data and it's yeah. data, right? It's research, right. So we're measuring pressures. Whereas um, uh, one that doesn't cross over, or my, my favorite of course is the Lindell or the yeah. side pole. Um, you yeah. don't have that increase of pressure because like a Bozell, it's a loop. Bozells act differently because they're, they're acting on the underside of the chin when you take a, take a contact with them. But you know, anything that's a fixed shape that's not going to tighten is yeah. um, something that I think is is good, but anything that's going to tighten any kind of crossover, the, the horses can't just open their mouth and take the pressure off. That's it's not what they're going to do. So yeah, the question is, do you mean crossover under? Yes, it's like it's where the the it crosses under the chin and your your reins attach to either side of that. So when there's pressure on the reins, it causes pressure under the chin and on the top of the pole. And it's the biggest prop. Well, one of the problems is a lot of them don't release. Right, and that, that's exactly that's it. it. So, they, so they maintain that pressure. The other thing is you're actually creating opposition. If you're giving a signal from the right side, but the pressure is coming on to the left side, the, 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 the tendency of, the, of opposition is to go into that pressure rather than coming in the other direction. Yeah, it's so yeah, it's, 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 it's very, it is really interesting um, to so look I, at the I that the Lindell because Robin, I still have my original Lindell from 1985. <laughs> I yeah, think it is um, and I've had latex over the nose because it used to be the 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 rope. Yeah, um, yeah. Now we've gone to a rolled leather, and right. some people still like the the um, the rope, but it is a problem. And we would never use it without the latex, and because that's the problem for me with lots of them. And the the thing is, we don't we have it set so you don't have to do it too tightly, so the nose band is kept from sliding from a jowl strap and, and, right, it has a and jowl so strap. So, yeah. So, so anyway. Yeah. Um, so, know. we, so we went for, for, for Bob, going back to Bob, we went to the neck ring and I suggested that she ride him with that. And because he was doing this head flipping is where this sort of started. And so it was interesting because he didn't do it when, without the bit in his mouth. So, Yes, it can be from, you know, lots of different things going on. And, and as I say, she, he wasn't ridden on a lot of contact because every time he had contact, he, his head would, would go up. And you're going to see in, this, in the video that we went, from, we went through a series of things um, from a, a body wrap on, on her and the horse and then to a balance rein and then to the neck ring. 
And it's just really, I think it's really interesting to see how he's able to maintain the posture. So she'd only ridden him once before this, actually without a bridle. She had ridden him a couple of times using, having the bridle on his head and using the neck ring primarily. And that also helped, but it is quite different when you actually get everything off the head if it's safe to do. Right, and the safety is a really important point. Um, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. You want to be Number in a closed one. space um, yeah. until yeah. you um, know how the horse is going to react. Uh, and there, you know, you have to think about um, even if it's a well-fitting bridle or a lightweight bridle, we all have habits in relation to environments and a bridle is an yeah. environment. So many times when you take away that environment, the brain looks at what's going on completely different. Um, yeah. and so that's one of the reasons it's non-habitual nature. But the other one is that the horse has to take some responsibility in his balance that you can't control or make him do anything. Yeah. He has to start finding his own balance in his body. And so there it's, a. Uh, I just, I love it. It's such an interplay of watching horses and people kind of sort out what their responsibilities are. Yeah. And, and if they trust each other. Oh yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and I think that that's a that's a huge one is trust. So do you want me to find see if I can get this video? Yeah, you Let should me just share. Okay, so I'm going to first of all, oh you know, I gotta open this just a second. You know how tricky this can be. Oh yeah. Uh, I'm gonna close this. Oopsie, now I need to share this without losing this. Okay, let me just see. Let's pray that this works. It works sometimes and it doesn't work other times. So Let's see. No, I don't want to do this. I'm going to do this. There we go. And let's see if I can start this. So we started, and this was when she just came in um, without anything on. But even this is better than if, you know, we looked at the pictures kind of before. Like he's got a different top line. Um, and when you it, say without anything on, anything So different. nothing different, nothing different. This is, but you see the head, how the head starts? This yep. is, this was pretty typical and it really seemed like, like when he could get his head down, he would push his nose against into a pole or something. So it was kind of like that, you know, syndrome. Um, and it's, but and you can see. is so different here It's now. totally different. Like he, he, he's, his, like, it's really different. So now we put, I put a base wrap. So I've attached a body wrap to the chest and then the promise wrap around the rear end to just remind him of his edges. And I put a body wrap on uh, Cassandra because that's one thing she's been really working on releasing her back. She's got a lot of movement there, but um, re remembering not to push her heels down. So she's been focusing a lot on herself and she said that's really helped. So, so when I first put this on, I thought, like what I see now is that he's sort of exploring something different than he, because this is just like moment to moment. Um, and I, and I first thought, I thought, oh, you know, I'm not really happy with the with the the um, base wrap around the base of the neck, which can help to trigger the seeking reflex. Right. But I but I wanted him to just kind of feel that because it actually isn't terrible. He's he is sort of exploring. I think the the feeling of the pressure around the base of his neck. But in a moment, we're going to take it off, and then we're going to add the balance rein. And sometimes that's so important to put a piece of equipment on and then take it off yeah. after a very short 30 seconds to a minute. Yeah. Just so that the nervous system goes, oh, okay, it's not there for the rest of my life. Right. Oh, he's got his right lead. Yeah, <laughs> totally has his right lead. Yeah. <laughs> it's so fun to see him. I mean, this yeah. is so different. And he's, you can see him really trying now. You yeah. Know, the other thing is the, um, when we started with him, the, the try wasn't there. It was just kind of a hysteria. <laughs> So we took the we took the uh, base wrap off the base of the neck. We don't have a balance rein on yet, but I just wanted to explore it. And fortunately, we were in the middle of the day, so the light was really difficult. Yeah, um, it was almost impossible to find him in the video. Yeah, but the down uh, transition better, really yeah. different. Yeah, 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 really different. And when you see when he, when she has the balance rein on, where because the thing is that the the, the promise wrap activated his hind legs much more than he had before. 
But then to keep them from kind of falling through that, if she would take a hold of any sort of contact, he would still fall more. So when we added, let me just see, you know, maybe this is not yet with a balance rein. I'll see in a minute. I just wanted to see her in, uh, nope, she has a balance rein on. So what we were having her do is just, if he felt like he lost the tempo, particularly in the trot, is to just steady him with the balance rein and then like to, and then give him something, yes, that he could come into in her hand so that the rain that, and then let him stretch into it. But if she just let the reins flop, he had kind of nowhere to go with it. And, and so it was, there's some moments that he, her body wraps fall. You know, you, Robin, you bring up a really good point there about, you, you know, if you, if you have a, have a little bit of a contact that's supporting and then you throw it away abruptly, a lot of horses feel like they've fallen off a cliff. Um, yeah. Well, it's kind of like holding somebody's hand as you're, you know, approaching heavy traffic and then dropping them and running out of the, the intersection, leaving them in the middle. Yeah. Um, I think it's important to stress that, that, you know, the, the thing about having balance reins and uh, promise wraps continues the support. So um, somebody's asking a really good question. What is a balance rein? All right. Okay. So a balance rein is some people would look at as a, as a, you know, people will use jumping straps, but this is um, like a rein that goes, you see the moments that he's having here yeah. though is just so nice is um, so it goes around the, the base of the neck and the way that we do it, we have a, a rope that goes under the neck and then you hold on to a biothane rein well, and Yes, it, it's quite nice actually that some of his moments are like his whole top line is so different from before. So what you can do with this is you use it either 60-40, uh, 50-50, 60-40 the other way with, um, with the, between your reins and the balance rein. So what it can do is help to steady a horse back. Horses that come behind the vertical, it can help that elongation of the neck Horses who suck themselves back, so you know you've got nothing in your hand when you're going home and they're jigging, and you know there's all they do is keep avoiding the bit. You can steady them with the balance rein. So and, here's the balance rein, yeah. the red one, and so you've got your nylon, nice thick webbing, and then what I love about it more than anything is the adjustability. It's got a right, button. and so you can change the length, and then it has a little strap to fixed to your D-ring on your saddle so that you don't have to hold it the whole time. And yeah. I, again, I still have my original one from 25 years ago. Right. Years. Um, and I, I, uh, I won't give it, I won't ever let anybody take it. That's why I started carrying them. But there's, there's, they're kind and they're not too thick. So they're in your hand and you can make them, oh, that's really lovely. Isn't it? Long enough yeah. So that they'll fit any horse. And that's the adjustability is the key to the, the balance reins that makes them so handy. Yeah, the, tis, the tempo of his trot changed so much. And I've, you know, never seen this horse be able to maintain that, that sort of tempo for that length of time in the time that I've known him. Um, they're, the neck, the balance reins are extremely durable. I've had mine literally for, I can't remember when I got it, but a minimum of 20 years. And Rebecca, you're right. Um, it also takes the focus off the mouth for the rider and the totally. horse. Totally. You know, I always talk about creating like a collarbone because a horse doesn't have a collarbone. So they have muscles that act like that. But when you have that much weight falling forward, they, they don't have the support that we have from a collarbone. And so it's a nice way to give them some support so that they can feel like they're not falling. This is so fun to watch, Robin. I know, isn't it? It's just, it was really, and the thing is, what I noticed is, other than once we started to put some different equipment, he he didn't ever do that the you know the thing with his head again like he did even in the beginning like taking the head up to the side. Right. So which was which was pretty interesting and which is actually why I wanted to run this a little you know longer because so often it's like yeah you can catch a moment in time and definitely there's better moments than others but it's not terrible and you see especially on transitions and on corners which is you know a lot easier for them to. Um, hey, Robin, I could play video from, from last year if you want as a comparison. Oh, that would be interesting. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, it's just, it's pretty, it was pretty fun. Now, we're, we're going to, in a moment, I think it's not going to go on too much longer, we're then going to give her a neck ring 
with her rein. There wow. we go. But what a nice there top line. I know, isn't it? Horse. And his whole back is different. Look at him. I know. Got, he's got a back. Yeah. So this is this is how I like get to be back at Robin's for round two of Bob without actually. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> This is really fun. It's the, the next best thing to actually coming back up and doing this again. It's, and that, yeah. And, but you're, you know, it's nice to just let it run and you can see that there's so much more consistency in the horse. There's the, he's so much more rhythmic. Yeah. He, he doesn't twist his neck at the door at all. You know, yes. Does he gape his mouth once in a while? Sure. But you know, if you lose your balance, that's the thing is you're, you're going to try and figure it out. You know, whether, you, you know, you, stick your tongue out like people do when they're yeah. concentrating or fall forward a little bit, but he comes back. And I think that that is so important for people. So now we're starting to make what was the impossible. It's starting to become easy for Bob. Yeah. It's not elegant yet, but it's no. easier. Yeah. And it, and it was, the other thing was, is that keeping any sort of like steady rhythm that wasn't either rushing or get, getting completely because that was the thing is he would get he was too fast but too slow like he exactly. didn't move off the leg but he was then he would then rush so i just think he's you know this is this is the longest that he's ever sort of maintained that and that's quite a bit of work for a horse but as i say she's done great work over the last year but that whole top line is just so different and, and somebody just pointed out and i was noticing the same thing that the trot's so much more elevated in other words he has suspension in his trot and he has right. roundness in his joints instead of that just falling stiff yeah. legged head up trot yeah. yeah this is just so fun to see and, and she yeah, sorry go ahead uh, well, she's busy, you know, she's working on other things in between, like when she comes up to ride, it's not like, you know, it's not like she's working on this every single day or putting it on pads every single day. And I think that, you know, some people get concerned that they think they have to, you know, how long do they have to do this in a session? And right. um, it can be as little as just taking five minutes at the beginning of your ride, or even more importantly, in the middle of your ride, stopping, taking a little break, doing a little surefoot or putting a wrap on. Because I think for people, one of the hardest things to do is to stop and make a change while yeah. they're into something. Yeah, yeah. And it was, what, what was, she was also playing a lot with trying to figure out how she could now have contact because she's not been able to actually really maintain the contact like that light contact is long. I mean, it, she loses it sometimes, but the moment there would be contact, he would just put his head up. So we wanted her to let him take the contact and kind of stretch into it a little bit. So now we added the, <clears throat> the neck ring and you don't have to take the bridle off if you're not you know, comfortable with it, but you can often just have, get the sense of um, how to use it. Now she has her hand a, a little bit higher than I probably would, um, but there's different, you know, ways to ride with it. I think it is a little bit. And the, she still has the bridle on there. I can she see. She still that. has the bridle on, and she's just holding the reins with her left hand, and then kind of steering with the with the right hand. With a little, the more you use kind of a touch release on the neck, and you still you do everything you would with your body that you would if you had reins. So you can just steer them. So then we go through a process of where we put, we make a halter out of a rope, and this is sort of the second step of this. I. I didn't that record is the video. Different. That is so amazing, <clears throat> isn't it? Yeah, I know. <laughs> it's wow. And so we first of all had it like a over the nose. So Mandy had done a little bit with them. I just wanted to show people that um, we like to have a process of safety. And and so if you and this is a fairly big arena, but you know she knows Bob and we know Bob and so on. And so we first of all want to make sure that she has brakes and that she has steering. And, um, and that person on the ground can just kind of help to uh, reinforce that a little bit. So she's just going to do a little trot with him before we set her free. And we wouldn't set her free if she didn't feel safe about it. Right. Or if we saw anything in the horse. Anything. Anything. Yeah, yeah. that it was. But and I've had. The, look at the softness, the relaxed. Face. I know. Isn't that nice? And look how. And smile. Oh, my I goodness. Know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and that's what I love about is the is the kind of the smile that they have. So Mandy is just gonna do a little trot uh to make sure that that the trot's okay. 
Yeah, and so anytime you, you take off a piece of equipment, you always want to go back to the beginning of making sure you have HALT, H-A-L-T, yeah. walk HALT, before you add any speed. Um, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. It's a good and, idea. <laughs> yeah, it's a good idea. But it's so fascinating because a lot of times, like lots of people ride primarily, even with a Lindell or a halter or something and the neck ring. Um, for many horses, once you take that bridle off, there is a real change that happens. And a lot of it is, I think there's a trust that happens like between you and the horse and you have to, you really have to trust each other. Now I I've had horses in clinics that I've gotten on first because <laughs> I wanted to sort of see, was this a safe situation? And there's been some that I've only taken them through the first process of having somebody on the ground right. um, because, because you can, you can tell those horses that they're so out of balance usually that when you, take away the bit and you take away that balance point, they don't know what to do. Right. So it, there, there is that in, in some, in some horses, but that was a really, I thought a nice transition for her. Yeah. And what's really fascinating is you can see him trying to figure this out. Yeah. You know, you can see, yeah, like there, especially yeah. you can see him trying to go, wait a second. Um, and his, but his attitude, his little happy ears, the radar checking in and really listening to um, Cassandra is just such a change in this horse. And the whole rear end actually, yeah, the bridle off change. He's stepping more deeply underneath. There's even more relaxation. Um, so, so somebody's saying, what is the difference between riding in the balance rein versus this? Well, yeah. It's like power steering. So the neck, the, the lariat is like kind of having power steering because you can easily, because it's stiff, you can pick it up and move it up along the neck. Whereas the, the balance rein basically, for the most part, sits at the base of the neck and, and acts sort of as a second rein. And this acts as, you, it's so easy to steer them with it because you can move it easily on the neck. Now, at, at one point, she's going to pop over a little jump because he's, she just, you know, started him jumping since she got him. And he tends to uh, really rush after fences because, of course, he loses his balance when he, and that's what he knows to do is go fast. So I asked her if she wanted to pop over, nice, yeah. a, a, a uh, just a little cross pole. And so she did. And, and she, like, he still rushed well, a little bit after. Awesome. Wasn't that nice? Was, wow. Yeah. So now <laughs> she's just going to pop over. And I'd like to see her go back to doing more of that because, wow. she, you know, he rushed a little bit after, but she was able to bring him back really well, easily. The, the happy ears, the forward ears. Yeah. Um, the other thing I wanted to say about the stiffness in the, in the neck ring, Robin, is that you can actually touch into each of the vertebrae, like identifying the different places in the neck for the horse to soften. You're not hanging yeah. on there. You're not choking yeah. them. You're yeah. just yeah. giving them a little support, but you can kind of help out this, the places that seem to be less conscious. Yeah. And the other thing is it's everything is on the release. Yeah. So the trusting the release is really hard for people. It's, I mean, he's, he's just so steady in this whole video. Everything he's done has just been. Look at that. Yep. So, so that's the thing is that if you try to hold it for the stop, it won't work. You give a little signal and then on the release, they can come into their uh, balance. So it takes a lot of trust on the part of the rider. Yes. But what, what I see a lot is this happy face on the horses like he had that says, hey, you know, this is different. And I see it as, you know, kind of, you do trust me. Right. It's got to go both ways. Yeah. Yeah. So we start, we have a small indoor arena. So we, you know, sometimes have people just start there and that's, um, you know, that's a little bit easier for them. So a little bit of the canter. But you see, he, he really has to balance himself and the rider has to also balance themselves. And that's the other part. You know what, Robin, I'm going to go for a little bit of video, tricky. a little bit of before video so that okay. we can have comparison here. Um, and I don't even know, hang on, I got to get back so I can, I'm just going to pick any, any, you know, whatever video kind of pops up here because it's from a year ago, just so people can see the difference in this horse. Uh, and I, again, I don't even know which one this is. I'm just randomly grabbing a video. Uh, 
we're going to make it. Okay, so here's the well, watch it walk. Yeah, I mean, okay, and I, don't, I, don't, I can't, I, I can't zoom it in a bit, but I mean, just look at how much the head and neck comes back and up. Yeah. It, it could almost hit her in the face. It's yeah. so extreme. Um, and yep. So we'll, this is what, yep, there's the head flip, yeah. the tossing, the staring at the gate. Look at the tightness in the back. And he's moving his front legs by pulling his head and neck back. In other yeah. words, he's going to, into extension to move the legs in the walk. So this is a year ago, July, um, just as a comparison. And let me just move this forward a little bit and see. I think we have some trot. That's still a walk. Like someone said, looks like two guys in a suit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it does. Yep. Uh, let's see. I know we have some trot. And then, Robin, we're going to have to watch the after again just because we don't want to Yeah. Leave. So you can – oh, yeah, here's the trot. Wait, there we could see him going past again. I'll just back that up a little bit. So it's hard to believe that this is the same horse when you see just how high his head is, how stiff his back is, how short his stride is. I mean, if yeah. you look at the movement in the front legs, those legs are barely getting to the middle of his neck, never mind reaching out to his nose, which yeah. is already retracted about yeah. the feet. I know. Um, Right, and there's the twisting and the wanting to leave the gate. And I think we even see her try to pick up her right lead in this uh, piece, because this is the before video. Yeah. Let me yeah. just see if I can scroll it forward a little bit, if I can get that out of there. Um, she trots the other direction. Okay, there's our left lead canner. And again, look at the shortness in the stride. Even though he's a big horse, yeah. there's no length in that. There's There's, you know, he rushes, so it's fast, but it is not a stride of length. Like, he barely comes underneath himself. This is great, Robin. Yeah, it's fun, there's, isn't it? Right? Let's see. There's a couple of comments here. Let's just, yeah, wow, Rebecca's like, yeah. Um, and I don't think we even, if we got a right lead canner, we barely got a right lead we canner. Did. I, we did, because I, I, I put together a, a bit of video of him from, oh, okay, great. on the first day. So we did have right lead, um, but it wasn't easy for him. And, you know, the thing I so appreciate about Cassandra is the, how she's really worked so hard to do things, to do right by this horse, you know? So, you see, this is right lead. Yeah, this difficult is for him. Yep. Yeah. And I mean, his head really is difficult. so high, she has to be careful going yeah. into a forward position that she doesn't get hit with his head. Um, yeah. She hasn't stuck a tie down or a, or a standing yeah. martingale on him, which is, you know, it, it's only going to limit him. It's not going to change what he does. Um, yeah. But it is a safety feature. Sure. Which, you know, I wouldn't object if she had some kind of a martingale, like a running martingale on the horse at this point, if she was a student that came to me just from a safety perspective. She did for a while use a, a, a running martingale. Like, so she did, she has used some things just for sort of for the short term in the process of, of working. I think after this point, she probably used it um, a little bit, but she didn't take any one tool and say, I'm going to make my horse do it with this tool. Like she's really, um, that's why I say, I think, you know, I don't know her instructor personally, but I've, I, I, I feel like from everything I've heard that she's really working. She just got a good classical background with horses, you know, right. so, and, and that's nice. Properly adjusted is a reminder exactly. of her to be not a, not a force. So yeah, Robin, exactly. I have to stop, share my screen. And yeah. You okay. Okay. Lovely. <laughs> okay. Let's <laughs> see if we can see. now uh, see the after. So I have to open this. Stop this just a second. And so, you know, if you're ever wondering, can can the the teamwork and the balance rein and the body wraps and the sure foot pads be combined to make a difference? The answer is absolutely yes. Um, would you do everything all in like the first session? Eh, that's probably overkill. Yeah. Um, you yeah. know, like by splitting things up and doing one thing one day and another thing another day, you give the horse the ability to process that information instead of overwhelming them. Um, you know, you can just think that if somebody came to you and said, oh, we're going to give you a complete makeover, we're going to do it in one day, and we're going to change everything, it's a little overwhelming. Yeah. So I'll just sort of flip through some of these that. But I mean, just that, just the muscling. Yeah. Oh, his muscling is so different. 
his little happy ears and you know his his reach and his trot i mean look at his front legs move forward to yeah. his toes yeah um it's really it's just really really nice and so yeah some of these ottvs you know they they need time but they also need information because that's what they have not necessarily been given and certainly if they're been trained for a racehorse that's a very different function than a dressage or a show jumping horse um because the the whole goal of a racehorse is to put all of the acceleration on, in a straight line forward like a train yeah yeah i'm um, gonna see if i go to the here we'll get and so bit. we we have to think that we're remapping body parts we're remapping or creating new uh movement patterns or re-establishing movement patterns they might have done as a full but haven't done in a long time yeah um yeah that transition is yeah. just well so much more articulation through the hawks like it's it's yeah. really and, and and then it gets the elevation so it's it was it was fun it was really really fun to uh to work with her. Um, so we've got a question. What would you suggest for her to use at shows? As I imagine the rules are that she needs a bit. Well, this is just the, this is, these are just the, the, you know, the process, you know, so it's not that she's, you know, she'll go back and forth in between using with the bit, using the balance range. So you get the horse steadied so the horse can maintain the posture, but you know, again, she's, it's for her, the eye is not on the destination it's on the journey. So, you know, going to shows, she has never taken him to a show yet. She's just doing, you know, lessons and she's just working to help him, you know, be happier and more functional and, and so on, which I think is extremely sensible. Right. And the other thing <laughs> is that if this was my horse, I would take him to a show and not show him. Right. I would take him to the show and let him, you know, be at the show, go yeah. in the warm up arena. I'd use my surefoot pads before I took him into the warm up arena, not in the warm up arena in a jumper show because it's a little crazy. Um, I would go in and use my balance rein in the warm up arena. I could even use a promise wrap. So, you know, your warm up area is where you can do these things to set yourself horse up for success. And I think in his case, not showing would be super important yeah well she yesterday morning she'd gone to help at a little schooling show the local schooling show and she said oh she wished she would have just taken him because it was pretty low-key there weren't a lot of people there but she takes him every week he goes somewhere to for her lessons and so on so he does get out um but it's it's it was um yeah it was just in, interesting to so we have a question to, uh, if a kind of see that. is out would pads help so um you know the word out is such a strange word hmm. because it, what does that really mean? If, if a joint is really out of joint, it is extremely painful. Um, yeah. But it, there could be a um, lack of mobility, which I think is a lot of what people think of as out, that there's a loss of mobility. Um, Surefoot pads can be helpful in those cases. I'm not going to say that they're going to solve everything or replace a good chiropractor. Um, but we've seen horses that, uh, with... Um, Linda at uh, Essen in Germany and Equitana one time there was a horse and his pelvis was like totally on level and he only wanted hard pads under his back feet which he stood on for several minutes and then in the afternoon his pelvis was level so you know in those cases is it a habit is it just a lack of awareness is it really you know stuck um, I think with the surefoot pads, you will get some clues about that. You'll find out, okay, so if I do the pads, I see great relaxation, but still the movement is sticky. Um, okay, so calling your chiropractor or asking your chiropractor if surefoot pads would be helpful if you have one. Um, it's, you know, it's one of those things that for each horse, there's a different mm. answer in terms of how effective it's going to be and how long lasting it's going to be, depending on what underlying issues are there. And it's certainly worth the shot because I've seen so many amazing changes. And I'm sure you have too, Robin. Yeah, and certainly in conjunction with anything that you're, as you say, if you talk to a, your, you know, chiropractor or, you know, whatever, whoever your sort of healthcare provider is for your horse is, you know, making sure that it's, it's going to be helpful. But what I find sometimes too is if, say you ask your horse to pick up a foot to step on a pad, and you notice that there's one foot that they really can't, they, they can't lift to step on it. Now, we don't know which leg is the issue, but it's going to tell you that there is some issue. And so sometimes that even like as a, like, 
and I, and I don't mean diagnostically in that you're diagnosing that you're a vet tells you that you need to get somebody. It, you know, like it tells you, I better, you know, find somebody to really help me with this because it's not, it's not really, um, something's going on. Right. And, I think of it as kind of being a detective. Yeah, exactly. Right? And you're yeah, looking for clues and those clues, when you start to see that there are clues that are all kind of pointing in a certain direction, lead yeah. you in that direction. And Surefoot's kind of like a magnifying glass and it puts a big spotlight yeah. on your horse's balance and how easy it is for him to pick up his feet and um, how secure he feels. And so that leads you into finding other solutions or, or adding other things to it. And in a lot of cases, just using the pads has made huge changes to horses that have stuck. I mean, you know, Bob, they've done a lot of other things with Bob, but the, it's, the pads were a turning point for him to start setting the whole system into another direction, into a positive direction. Like yeah, and I, I think that's the whole key is that whole thing of novelty, novelty that's not too difficult, that, that provides comfort so that because you know you can't change a habit if you don't change something and right. you don't change something by doing the same thing over and over again okay. uh lindy has a question about where the best place is to put your horse on the pads for the first time cement or sand i would say yes. sand and an open area so you know i've seen many horses where they seem totally calm and everything's okay but one of the classic tenets of feldenkrais and um uh, we've had other webinars. We'll talk about Feldenkrais in other webinars, but the whole Feldenkrais method is about learning new possibilities of movement and using your body to do that. And so typically lessons are on, on the ground and you're laying on a mat. Well, I will tell you that if there's a water bottle or a pair of shoes or a notebook that is too close to you, it's already affecting the way you move. Yeah. yeah. So if you're trying to work with a horse in a barn aisle and it's busy and somebody's moving their horse and another one's banging its bucket, <laughs> your horse is going to be distracted and not able to to focus on what you're doing so the less distraction you have the more open the environment where he's not feeling pressure on his bubble if you will um, then he's going to be more available and it's going to be easier for you because you're not also feeling the pressure of all these things if there's somebody watching you or you know you're in a tight space so always set yourself up for success and and work in a more open environment um, i've worked in pens where you know i take the halter off the horse and have the horse loose is one of my favorites not a huge field because you might not see them again but <laughs> a reasonable space like robin's arena would be kind of big but her indoor is really nice yeah 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 well and i think the other thing is um that that well because i know lindy her her uh, area that's that's uh it's stone it's not level and I think that that's the, it's not, it's not totally level in places. And I think that that's the sand. It's, it's sand is unlevel in a different way. Right. Do, do you, know what, you know what I mean? So that's the thing. So what, what about letting them eat from a hay bag while doing the pads? Um, I, I typically want them to focus on what we're doing and horses can use food as a distraction. So let's put it this way. I'm trying to talk to you about learning something new on your computer and you're busy there eating a bowl of popcorn and watching the movie. Um, <laughs> it's kind of like uh, some horses, it's, it, they, food can be beneficial if they're really nervous to kind of get them over the initial. But what you don't want is you don't want the horse to suddenly realize he's standing on a pad when he was busy eating, right? Mm -hmm. You know, he's not paying attention, then he suddenly discovers it and he can startle. So um, I'm not a, a huge fan of using food, although I've seen people, you know, let their horses eat hay. I think you have to take every case as an individual, but as a general yeah. rule, I, I think not using the food is a good idea. I was going to, just a couple of things that when we were talking about the, you know, warm up, say, in a, before you go into a class, in 1999, we did the last, uh, it was the last big seminar that uh, Dr. Klimka did. Oh, yeah. in los angeles and we had there's like 12 riders two from from uh training level up through grand prix and then there's 1200 spectators and we were there and we we introduced to people like the balance rain and the and the promise wrap and so on and they rode in their warm-up and then they went in the ring without just without except that there was one woman who the balance rein made such a difference to her horse who was so sucked behind the vertical and she so she used the balance rein and it made such a difference to the horse that he said like let her ride 
like in the class in the class with it and and it was fine at, at a certain point in it we we asked her to stop and linda said wanted her to take it off because she was becoming she was hanging on the balance rein and and so it's like everything that's not a um it's not a quick fix answer you still have to take responsibility to it's that it's the little bit of connection and the release it's not the it's not hanging on it. It's about allowing them to find their own balance, release the head and neck, and bring the withers up. But that doesn't happen if you're if you're hanging on it. Robin, I don't know if you agree with it. I always tell people to think of lifting uh, it skyward uh, because the minute it comes back, you're yeah. pulling on it, right? Yeah, and that's yeah. a totally yeah. different field of yeah. what you're gonna lift. Totally. And the same thing, even with the with the neck ring, I always say to people, like, think about up the angle of the shoulder as opposed to back and also so it'll be a slight it's slightly up rather than back for sure because as soon as you go back you create more opposition it's just that's right you just create that reflex and so you can uh, think of it similar to surefoot pads they're suggestions and they're offers and you're su yeah. providing support but you're not forcing or trying to make anything happen or trying to find a dependency on it it's just it's um yeah. You know, that's why letting horses walk off of pads is so important instead of trying to make them stay. If they're going to walk off, they've lost their balance, let them walk off so yeah. that they don't feel trapped. And then you just come back and offer again because you want them to discover their balance, just like with the balance rein and the neck rope, you want them to figure out where their balance is. And the other piece of this is that you start to find out what kind of dependency you have. <laughs> with your, yeah, with your you're standing there and you're, come on, Spilly, pick up your foot. You can do it. You know, it's like, mm, it's an offer. They get to. Yeah. 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 They get to refuse. Well, uh, Elizabeth asked whether you always hold the balance rein. One of the reasons that we attach these grazing strings to it is people will ask what they're for and you can, you tie it onto, there you go. You tie it onto the front ring of your, um, of your saddle so that if you do let go of it, you, it won't slide down the horse's neck. I mean, that's because that wouldn't be safe. And so, um, and sometimes people will just hold it a little bit in one hand, but not do anything with it if they're, if they're, you know, concerned with it, um, you know, flopping around the horse's, um, the horse's neck and you can adjust it. Right. The adjustability to me is, is one of the keys that it's actually long enough. But the other thing is that it's thin enough that you can hold it with your outside rein. Yeah. So a lot of times I'll have somebody hold the, the balance rein and the outside rein, almost like a bridge, half yeah. bridge, and then they yeah. have the turning rein, the inside rein. Yeah. So, um, and that really helps pick up that inside shoulder. Yeah. Just that with that, just that little bit of a, a connection can be um, actually really helpful. Yeah. Um, so, <laughs> yeah, different colors. So how should the balance rein fit? Well, you know, the thing is, it, it's what it's going to depend on is the size of your horse's shoulder for one thing and if and the length of your horse's neck. So it's why we want to adjust it so that you can sit on the horse and not have your arms straight holding on to the balance rein. You need to be able to hold it like you could a rein um, and not feel like you're being pulled forward. So that is uh, is something that you kind of you know, pay attention to. And that is pretty dependent on the size of your horse. Yeah, so, so if it's too long, I have to really move my arm. And if it's too short, I'm getting pulled forward. And when it's just, it's Goldilocks. When, yeah. <laughs> when yeah. it's too right, it engages when you just do a little lift and you can just a little lift and lower on your hand and you have connection. So yeah. that's the beauty of the adjustment is that you can dial it into just right. And you can also hold it with two with two hands, like, and that's then you need to make sure it's long enough that you're not causing it's not to have having constant uh, pressure on the on the back um, on the neck. So that makes a difference. Well, last weekend I taught uh, a one day, and we had a a, a very interesting quarter horse uh, um, like some kind of quarter horse draft cross, really seemingly very very you know compliant sort of horse and he is super nice horse put him on the pads they, they they call him stubborn and things like that because if he isn't given any direction he falls he falls away from you I put him on the pads and he went just like immediately into the kind of that zen kind of feeling and it, it's you know he seemed to be really enjoying them but what's interesting is then in the afternoon we did some stuff with uh with the wrap and with the base wrap he actually went into the same release. I've never actually seen it the same way. 
No, I, no, I was just like, I, yeah, I should have pulled out my phone, but I didn't actually have a camera with me. I was, I was so surprised. So anyway, that was, that was actually quite interesting. Um, interesting to see that. Um, now, I don't know if we have time. I don't know if we, because uh, there, there was a question that came up about that horse. Oh yeah, let's do it. We have time to do that. Okay. So do you have the, I don't have the thing in front of me. Do you have it in front of you? <laughs> Some, yeah. I, um, a question from someone who can't be here. We're going to answer it live so that she can watch it later. Um, did you do? And I sent it to you. So just. Did I send it to you? Yeah, you did. I can actually. Uh, oh, it's the mayor's heat cycle. Is that the one? Yeah, that's correct. Okay. Yeah. So hi, Wendy. I want to thank you. Okay, blah, blah. Uh, um, I have a question for Robin's session today. I am working with a rescue horse that is a Pasifino. She is displaying a range of behaviors toward other horses when she is in season. She has never been aggressive to me during a cycle, a bit more difficult to handle until I can get her working. Is there a Tellington touch that would help her? It is important that we turn this behavior around. I would not want this behavior to prevent her from being adopted. She made a wonderful progress since we've had been working with her and I've been using the pads, which, which uh, there's a typo, does quiet her. She has, she has even placed both hind feet on one pad by herself. <laughs> Fortunately, I'll not be able to be present at the webinar tonight. So I like uh, the first thing that I would say if, if her he heat cycles are fairly strong, even if they're not, um, she's not reactive towards people, that's where things like Chinese herbs might help and, and so on. So that would be one thing to explore to see if it just happens that she has really strong heat cycles and that creates that um, sort of reactivity towards um, other horses. Um, those kinds of things being kind of ruled out or, you know, looking at that. I'm going to, I have a little video here of doing some tail work. Okay. And um, tail work can be really helpful. And of course, you have to make sure that they're, uh, comfortable let me just see i'm gonna close this um and <clears throat> so um this is uh, th this is one of my uh old guys and uh he has navicular but he's happy to stand in here. So, so tail work and actually the ear work, ear, stroking the ears and doing touches around the base of the ears could really help to balance. Um, it helps to balance the triple heater, the triple warmer, which is connected to the um, uh, digestive, uh, respiratory and reproductive system. So ear work at almost any time can be, so the, the T-touch ear strokes and touches around the base of the ear can be helpful. Now here, do you notice that I'm standing like, I'm standing beside the horse. Yeah, I'm close to the wall. I do know him really well. So I've started by one hand on the top of the croup, stroking the hair on the from the top of the tail. And it's going to give you a pretty good idea if the horse is but you can you know, see comfortable. That all the way through him. All yeah, the way yeah. Him. And you're not pulling, right? You're just no. sliding. Yeah, so I slide down the hair. And it's, it's nice when they can be free because you see how he's kind of participating a little bit. And then I'm gonna, I take, he's got, Icelandics have such thick tails. So I've just picked up the hair on the top of the tailbone and I'm just circling it in both directions and then a little glide to see his body move. And then on, I'm gonna slowly release. And you see the movement come back. And it's that little bit of a sort of pause that's really helpful. So I've picked the tail up. And so my hand is not underneath the tail, which is, is actually, especially if you have a, a horse that's a little bit tight around that, it's better to stay on the top of the tail. Or what I've been doing is putting a wrap under the tail like, like a, and doing a lift with it rather than having my hand there and doing it further down for horses with super tight tails. And that's pretty interesting. So nice. interesting to watch yeah. his midsection and yeah. all the ribs and the diaphragm shifted. Here I'll just... um, and, and Rebecca said that mouth work and body wrapping is also soothing to the nervous system. Yeah. Now I'm just going to make that little question mark with the tail, circle it in both directions. 
there'll be a little pause. So this is all done with just little, I'm gonna push the tail in to the body and pause. And then. And notice Robin's body. Yeah. She's really yeah. not using her arms to do this. She's just shifting her weight. So that's, it's important because you're not. Very important. Yeah. Very. It's not about pulling the tail, but if you allow your arms connected to your body to have that movement, it's, um, it's really, uh, is really beneficial. So that's a one thing I, I mean, doing some of the, the, the tail T touch work, I think could be super helpful. Um, oh yeah. Oh, that's interesting. Rebecca says put doing raccoon touches. So little touches with the, so circular touches with the tips of the fingers, um, all along the midline and actually you could do them all along the bladder meridian as well. So, you know, any of the, any of that, um, sort of connection, I think could be, could be really helpful. And I think the mouth work would be super beneficial because it helps to, um, the emotions, you know, and all of the basic, uh, all of the sort of basic needs and, and, you know, heat cycle is, is, is kind of part of that and primitive. Recently we had the Equisoma ladies um, for a webinar and they were showing the skull and how there's actually a nerve that's coming right out here. There's a hole in the skull for right. the nerve that's coming right out there. And it's, yeah. you know, we've done mouth work forever, but I was like, wow, you're really tapping right into the nervous system right there. Yeah, right. And that life point too. I mean, that's the other thing yeah. is that if you, you know, it's, that can be really helpful if you have a horse in serious trouble while you're waiting for your vet to get there. Lots of uh, endurance riders have certainly used that. So yeah, so that's those are. I don't know if that might help with the with the question. I did lots of those little videos. It was really fun having a horse. I could just stick in the stall, and and he seemed to be pretty uh, accepting of that. Yeah, it's nice to have good models. There. Yeah, yeah, it is. <laughs> and they don't demand too much on their schedule, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, Robin, we've we've gone through another hour. This has been fabulous. It's so nice to see this update on Bob. And um, for anybody interested in learning more about T Touch, and and where can they go? So uh, we are. I'm just in the process of doing more online courses and with horses they're not quite up yet my first one is going to be on body wrapping and i've been having so much fun actually adding some things to it with lifts with wraps in all sorts of different places and um so ttouch.ca or ttouch.com we have a list of things pretty much uh everything would um would be um we're, we're going to actually get online. So Wendy, what are the plants behind you? That's your garden, isn't it? Yeah, that's my Joe pie weed. And I have uh, different varieties. I think I've actually got a hybrid out there because it's got more, this is like this lighter pinky color instead of the more red color. So waiting for it to bloom to see what the colors are going to be. Um, right. So I love Joe pie weed. It brings in the butterflies and there's lots of swallowtails out there right now. Nice. Cool. Um, cool. So, so thanks, Wendy. You're that welcome. Really fun. Pleasure. And if you're if you're interested in finding balance reins, uh, I have them on my website. Robin has them on hers, ttouch.ca. Uh, so you can find the Surefoot pads uh, in Canada at ttouch.ca and of course at murdochmethod.com. So thank you everyone for joining us again today. Please remember to subscribe to the Surefoot Equine YouTube channel so that you get a notice every time we put up another webinar, especially if you can't attend. Um, tomorrow, my guest is Jillian Kreinbring. She's coming back. It's at seven o'clock Eastern Daylight Time. Should be really interesting. She was very popular last time. And uh, we'll see you there. So have a great day. Thanks, Bye. you too. Bye.